We are going back to Genesis chapter 42. I finished reading chapter 42, but now let me start ministering uh, from this. I am asking the Holy Spirit to use these stories to do wonderful things um, for you. It is for you and for me. I ask that the mighty, mighty endowment of the visitation of heaven, the heaviness, the depth, the heaviness of heaven come to visit during the during the course of this program, this broadcast. In the name of Jesus the Lord we pray. Amen. Now we are at verse number 7 of Genesis chapter 42. We've been really making progress in reading the scriptures, word by word, verse by verse, phrase by phrase. I invite the angels of God to assemble also to join in these broadcasts. I also enjoy the citizens of heaven to join. Gracious Father, I am asking that you invite the citizen of Dell to join that to join us um, down here um, in this broadcast. And Lord, I ask that. I really want to thank you for sharing your heart with me. Jesus, I want to thank you for responding to the prayer that I prayed many days ago concerning your heart and that you've shared it with me. Lord, thank you for it. Amen. And Joseph saw his brethren and he, he knew them. He saw them and he knew them. You will never forget those who you loved but who treated you wrongly. You will never forget those who dealt with you harshly. You will never forget those who had the power to help you, to set you free, to make space for you, but they refused them. You will never forget. I, I will not forget. I, I don't like to hide. Excuse me. I do not like to hide behind those who um, behind those who um, would like to pretend like nothing really happened. It's all right. It's okay. Everything is fine. I'm not that kind of a man from God. Things did happen. Things went wrong. those who lied against you, who accused you, those who cannot pray for you, instead of them praying for you, they were looking for an opportunity to accuse and to judge you. And finally, you have made it into your place of the fulfillment of your destiny. not just for yourself but also for the family that rejected you 
a nation that didn't need, want you. If there is anything I like about God, it is his ability to deprive human being and the devil too of seeing into your future so that they will not pretend so that they can show their true color. Joseph recognized his brethren when they came and they bowed before him. He recognized them. Why? He was a changed man, brilliant man, a gentleman, a high priest of Egypt. A man of honor, the ruler of the land, the very symbol of Pharaoh. Power, opulence, dignity, honor. And still, in spite of all of that, he was still God's oracle. He was still God's son. You see, there is the tendency for us to see a dream or a prophecy as just spoken word, dream as just a thing. The anointing is not a thing. The blessing is not a thing. A dream and a vision and destiny is not a thing. A prophecy is not a thing. A destiny is not a thing. It's about a life. Why we take those things so simple is because we just think it's just what come and go. No, they don't come and go. They come to stay. That's why people are looking for so many prophecies because they think they are things that come and go. They don't come and go. They come and stay. It's about the making of a life, the making of a personality, the shaping of a person, the formation of a nation. But he made himself strange unto them. He made himself strange unto them. And he spake roughly, he spake roughly unto them. He spoke, he was very rough with them. He spoke roughly to them. He made himself very strange to them. You guys think that you can play big boy's game? I was a little boy. And you guys dealt with me roughly. I'm going to teach you guys a lesson how big boys play their real games. And I'm not just teaching you about the big boy's game. I'm teaching you how gods play their games. I'm going to deal with you guys from the point of the high class. Because you guys thought that because my mother Rachel is dead, who was the power of the family, the boss of the family, and so you are taking it out on me? <laughs> That's what Joseph was saying. I'm going to teach you guys a lesson before, if possible, I accept you guys into my life and put you guys far away from me also. Well, let me tell you.
any human being who was not able to deliver you to protect you when they should have done that even if you accept them back into your life some way in life or you want to help them you do that from afar you give them their own place to stay remember joseph never lived with them anymore and he can't because he's pharaoh incarnated among the people of egypt I can speak wildly with words pertaining to this. He made himself very strange and spoke roughly to them. He spoke roughly to them. And he said unto them, Whence comest ye? Whither comest ye? But when is comes them? Where are they coming from? And they said, From the land of Canaan to buy food. Why is he asking them this question when he already knew where they are coming from? This is exactly this is exactly what I call the drama of God or the drama of the gods or the dramas of angels or spirits. This is how they behave. At any time you encounter God, at any time you encounter his angels, any time you encounter the supernatural, the spirit world, we are spirits. Part of the mystery of how the game is done is even though you know something, you pretend like you don't know it. And let the other person reveal themselves clearly and properly for you to be sure. Even though you know it. Come, let us reason together, says the Lord in Isaiah. Isaiah said so. Does it mean the Lord doesn't know everything about you? Why is he asking you to pray? Does it mean he doesn't know everything you need? Your word must be heard. <laughs> your word must be heard to determine your heart. For what you believe must be constructed with words. And words are not things. Words are living things. Remember Jesus risen from the dead behaved like though he was a gardener. And he was asking Mary, his dear friend, a woman that he loved intensely and passionately, that he can he will do anything for that woman for good. Woman, who seekest thou? Cleopas and his friend on the day of the resurrection, on Easter, were talking among themselves, and Jesus walked and joined them, a total stranger, and asked them what they are discussing as though he didn't know already. He did. Hagar, slave or maid of Sarah, what's going on with you? Where are you heading to? Where comest thou? When comest thou? The angel knew everything but still ask her. Why? Listening to people, leading a hum another human being, tell their stories, an art of healing, and also an art of de-escalating problems. Make people feel better. Make people know that they are loved and cared for. When you take time to be with people, you take time to listen to people. 
I learned that from how God and his angels respond to humans. And we are learning that too from Joseph. He knew who they were. He did not charge at them and start accusing them of what they did against him or threw them in prison and asked for them to be assassinated. He didn't charge them with what they did against the memory of Rachel. Because let me tell you, behind the story of Joseph, is a vengeance against Rachel by the ten children of Jacob. And they took it out on their father, and they took it out 90%, 10% on their father, 90% on Joseph. They have declared their intention while they are here. And Joseph knew. And remember at this time, Joseph is completely an Egyptian. Zafnat Pania, the revealer and keeper of the mysteries, the chief priests of Egypt, and the eye for the nation, he occupied these three positions. Now he's going to use one of his position to deal with issues here. You can imagine how many people Joseph um, must see in a day. Jo jo see, they have not pioneered Joseph, the son of Pharaoh, twice in the history of the Bible, we have had two Hebrew children become Pharaoh's sons. Joseph and Moses. One played along and still achieved the great end. The other one killed to try to achieve, and has to come back at the age of eight zero. That's Moses. Don't try to do God's will with violence. Because it's not gonna work. Hallelujah. Look at the next verse, verse number eight. And Joseph knew his brethren. He knew his brethren, but they knew they knew not him. Because at this point of time, Joseph is an Egyptian, completely an Egyptian. He can speak Hebrew, because that's his language, but he let it go. He can speak different languages. One of the things that you have to know about Joseph, occupying this position in Egypt, is this. Joseph was, like you see, when people come to Egypt to do business, 
diplomats, ambassadors, executive officers of other nations. They meet with Joseph first, and Joseph go with them into the presence of Pharaoh, and then sit, and then he take his seat. He offered them seats after they bowed before him and before Pharaoh, and then they can listen to them. He is the one who examined them to make sure. See, we are getting all this from these stories. He makes sure that everyone who enters Egypt to do business in Egypt, whether food business, whether relationship between nations, whether maritime, any kind of business, the chief officials, the secretaries of those departments, they answered to Joseph first. Only what was important, then Joseph deal with it before his Lord, Pharaoh. And so since these people were from a different nation, from a different territory, they have to meet with him. They have to meet with him. And he has to interview each of these people. This, this is a very serious job. Custom and excise, he did it. I mean, there were people there to work with him But he's able to pick people out and talk to them. He had a sharp eagle's eyes to, to determine because Joseph had the spirit of God and also had professional skills. Bring people out, interview them, make sure that they are not enemies. So he put his brothers through this process that he does also. So don't get me don't, don't get the Bible wrong that he was doing this in order to revenge or in order to, to, to hit back at his brothers at this time because he had the power. No, 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 no. That was part of it. But it also came out of his professional skill of being the one that interviews people who come into Egypt. If there is something suspicious about individual or groups of families, they reported to Joseph, who now, who, um, who asked for them to, to be brought to his presence. And he talked to them and interviewed them. Just, just some quick, sharp questions. And Joseph remembered the dreams which he dreamed of them. <laughs> he remembered the dreams, listen here, he says, he remembered the dreams which he dreamed of them. What kind of dream is this? I want I want you to get it right. This is verse number nine. Joseph remembered the dreams that he dreamed about them. Excuse me. Is it the two dreams that he had when he was in the land of Canaan? of the 11 stars bowing down before him. That's part of it. But there is another dream here. Since he left the land of Canaan, since he became a slave, and all the time that he was in the house of Potiphar, in jail, 
And now the Lord of the Lord of Egypt, he has not ceased to have nightmares about his family. Nightmares, I mean, I'm not I'm not talking about demons coming to attack him or his brothers coming to attack him. No. Of course, he had nightmares about what his brothers did to him. It played back in him. But he also had dreams about the good times he had with them when he was a little boy growing up. When all this problem did not occur between them and him. It wasn't him and them. It was them. This was him. It wasn't, he didn't have anything against them. They were the one who were retaliating based on what they thought Rachel did against them. See, certain things played behind the scene and you don't see it. Because even Rachel administered who sleeps with Jacob. Who gets what? Leah didn't like that. Neither Zelpa or Belha. He had a lot of good, bad, and ugly dreams about his brothers. Did he wish sometime that he wasn't sold into Egypt? Yes. See, this is not a one-way thing. You have to see it all as a package happening at the same time. These are the things that changes a person's life. He dreamed, he used to have, he tells us here in verse 9 that he used to have dreams concerning his brothers. Not just about what they did against him, but also the good times. He remembered. And this is what he said to them. Ye are spies. This, ye are spies. He's now talking to them on his official capacity as the one that, that makes sure that those who come into Egypt do not come to come and scout out the land. Let me tell you, sometimes the best person for you to put in a position is somebody who is an outsider who understands how people of other cultures think and act. And this Pharaoh was very smart to put Joseph in this kind of position as next to him. Because he is able to, to know immediately, based on all his gifts, including supernatural characters or characteristics or traits, who is who and why they are in Egypt. So here he, he classified them as spies immediately. And let me tell you why. Because there are 10 of them. Why are 10 men coming into Egypt at the same time? What will Pharaoh say when Pharaoh hears about this? So he has to immediately go into, into his job to interview them. Ten men came into Egypt at the same time, and these are grown-up men. So it's not just that he's just talking to them because he knows who they are, but he has to interview them to really know who they are as of now. What are they coming to do? Say to buy food. Really? Just to buy food? I have to know what 
my brothers are up to. If they were able to sell me and keep the secret, and I know my father doesn't know because if Jacob knew, Jacob would have come to Egypt looking for his son. But Jacob doesn't know. And Joseph knew that his father doesn't know that he's alive. He knows it. So have they slayed their father? Have they destroyed everything and escaped down to Egypt? Have they moved to somewhere else with their own families and abandoned Benjamin and their father and their women? So this is what was playing out here. So it was not just an outright trying to be an outright vendetta or an outright vindiction. No. He want to know because he can't trust this man. Naturally, he can never trust them anymore. Because they've proven the kind of spirit that they have, that they can, they can do something evil and conceal it. So why do you need to trust them? They tell you they are coming to buy food and you will trust them? Ten men who were able to sell somebody. And you should trust them when they tell you they are coming to buy food. No. Find out whether they've killed their father, his father. Find out whether they've killed his only surviving brother, Benjamin. Or whether they've destroyed and raped the women of their family. Because these are hostile beings. Some of them are beasts without brains, without conscience. They were born into wealth, so they took life easy. Their mother was able to give birth. Boom, boom, boom. Joseph's mother, Rachel, wasn't. And took comfort in exercising power and administering wealth. They didn't like it. And Rachel said to them, to hell with you all, whether you like it or not, I'm boss. So here goes Rachel's son, the real Joseph. He must find out really what their real intention is. And he has to extract from them the new history of the family of, of, of his. Because these are guys who can sway secrecy and will never say anything to anybody. Ten, these ten rogues here. And when people are like that, you don't trust them. You need to extract from them the truth about Benjamin, the truth about Jacob, their father. The truth about their own mother's Leah Bill Hazelpa. He need to extract the truth from them. One way or the other, they are going to prove truth and why they are here. Ye are spies. Ye are spies. That's what Joseph told them. He didn't say much to them. He carved out a word to use. And this, this words that only high officials can pronounce. Ye are spies. You're going to prove that you are no spies. Ye are spies. <laughs> To see the nakedness of the land. That's why ye are come. That's what he told them. You come to find out the weakness of Egypt. So that you come to fight against Egypt maybe with the enemies of Egypt. If not, why are ten of you here? 
Can just five of you come here to buy food or three? Why come all of you at one time? You have bad intention. Verse number 10. And they said unto him, Nay, that is no, my Lord. But we are here to buy food. To buy food. Are thy servants come? We come here. See now, they are using two names for him. In fact, three. They call him governor of the land, lord of the land, and they make themselves his servants. We are your servants. These are the same people who would never say that many years ago. And now they bow before him. They can't even look up to talk to him. They have to bow down to the ground and plead for their life because now they know that they are in trouble. They now call him Lord of the land, Governor of the land, Ruler of the land. And they are now humble like a lamb. Your servants are here only to buy food. We are no spies. Verse number 11. And now they began to talk about their family history. He's pushed them enough. He's pushed them to the wall. He's made them know that he's, he's going to, he's going to, he's going to do something to them if they do not tell the truth. They are not going to get no food and they are going to, to be put in prison. To be tried for treason or for trying to invade a territory that is not theirs. And now they spoke up. We are all one man's sons. We are true men. Shall we say, they are now trying to say that they are people of truth and people of honor. No, they are not people of honor. They are not people of truth. You can't trust them. Now they are speaking for themselves that we are true men. We are people who speak the truth. Thy servant are no spies. What we have told you is the truth. We only come to buy for No, I will not trust you guys. Never in my lifetime will I. See, they are saying they are now people who tell the truth. Did they tell their father the truth of what they did? No. They cover it up by killing one of the goats. And by the way, they ate the goat. They ate the animal. That was a loss. They had a party in the bush. And came back to pretend that like Joseph is, is dead. And he said unto them, No, you are here to see the nakedness or weakness of the land. That's why you guys come. Verse number 13, And they said, Thy servants, now they are his servants. <laughs> Thy servants are twelve brethren, the sons of one man, the sons of one man in the land of Canaan. They are now talking about his father. He's now getting the news because all this time they were not talking. He's now getting the news about his father and he's listening. The sons of one man. In the land of Canaan, say there are 12 brothers. Let's see. Yeah, we are 12 brethren. 
12 brothers. Ah, so they still remembered me. That's what he's shaking his head. So they still remembered me. I'm included in that 12. The son of one man in the land of Canaan. And behold, uh, let's see this in the land of Canaan. The son, sons of one man in the land of Canaan. Okay, that is true. And behold, the youngest is this day with our father. Now he knew Benjamin is safe. Their father is safe and Benjamin is with their father. Is this day with our father and one is not. That is, one is dead. Which is him standing before them. The youngest is with our father. And one is dead. Ah, really? One is dead. And he didn't push that side. He wanted to push about his youngest brother. Now, people of God, let me explain to you whoever is watching this broadcast. Why was Jacob very interested in bringing Joseph and Benjamin very close to himself? Why? Why did Jacob took interest in bringing Joseph and Benjamin very close to his heart. Because these are children that came unexpectedly. God answered his prayer and the prayer of Rachel. And don't forget Mandrake. And these two kids came. They are the only kids that this woman who said, if she doesn't have children, she's going to kill herself. So she treated her and, the ch and her children with high sensitivity to make sure that this woman and, the me and her memory is highly protected in her children that she left behind. She, she found out that the rest of, the, of his wives and the 10 children were interested in dealing roughly in fact, in doing away with those two kids so that the ten kids and their mothers can have their way in the life of Jacob. Because as long as Joseph and Benjamin are alive, these ten sons and their mothers feel threatened. They feel that their lives are in danger. What kind of danger? They won't be. It's about inheritance. It's about power. It's about politics. It's about wealth and money. It's about the continuation of history. You have to fight for your position and the position of your children. And Rachel, even though her children came Last, her children came to her at an old age, but she wanted to make sure that they occupy the highest place and that they share in the biggest of the inheritance. That her children get at least 60 to 70 percent of the wealth of Jacob. And 
the rest can share whatever remain. That's what he wanted. That's what she wanted. And they knew that Jacob will give the biggest shares to Joseph and to Benjamin because of what was discussed between him and the relationship between him and Rachel, which was the top, the top of the line. That's where his heart is. Where his heart is, that's where his wealth gonna go and his love gonna go. So even if this woman was dead, he has to keep that covenant with her, even in death. So I want you to begin to get what is to get what is playing out here. And these other kids and their mother knows it. And now Rachel is gone. So they will make sure that these two kids too are gone. And now these 10 children are telling Joseph that he was dead. Interesting. But then Benjamin is safe. Now Joseph knows he himself is safe. Benjamin is safe. Their father is safe. All right. Throughout the history of Joseph, you are not going to hear Joseph ask them about Leah, their mother, or about Zelpa and Belha. Read the story, you'll see it. You will not see Joseph asked about the welfare or take some high interests about each of them and their families. He only asks about his father and his brother. And that's it. Why? They started it. To your home, O Israel. They decided to scatter the family. But Joseph won't do that. He will keep the family together. But he will make sure that Rachel's children, which is himself and Benjamin and their father, that they come first in everything, just as Rachel wanted it. So the story of Joseph that we are reading is actually the execution of the will that Rachel wrote in the heart of Jacob and how the other wife and their children almost overturned it. But for love and for God. Love of family and love of God. And also, but for the move of the hand of God. The God of Rachel. Verse number 14. And Joseph said unto, the, unto them, That is it that I spake unto you, saying, You are spies. He said, Ah, because of what you've just said. You were 12, one died. The youngest is with, the, with, your, with the, your father. I now see. So you guys are on a quest to conquer some territories. You guys are willing and ready to join our enemies to fight us. So you have a large family.
if ye were not spies? Why are all of you not here? Why the youngest one not here? There's something wrong about all of you. Something fishy. And you must come clean. Let's see what he says in verse number 15. Hereby ye shall be proved. I'm going to verify. I'm not going to believe all of you until I verify. I'm going to prove that what ye are saying is true. That you are honest men. Not that he didn't know this. By the life of Pharaoh, ye shall not go from this place except your youngest brother come here. I'm going to prove that you guys are true. See, Joseph never swore in the name of the God of his fathers because he's now an Egyptian and he is somebody else. That doesn't mean that in secret he did not worship the God of his father. He did. But he followed strictly the ways of his boss. Until you entered into the life of class then you understand this kind of situation. <sighs> he swore in the name of Pharaoh to tell you that he mean business. He never, he never swore in the name of his own father. Because even though Jacob is his father, he has a new father. And this is a guy who is willing to give him a shot and to protect him from, from Potiphar, from the jail, from life itself that has not treated him rightly. Hallelujah. Gee, I hope you are with me this afternoon. <laughs> I, I turn the telephone off. Nobody is there. So that I can concentrate on what I'm doing. <laughs> Go ahead and bring me your youngest brother. I swear in the name of Pharaoh. By the life of Pharaoh. That's how he swore. See, you sway by somebody greater than you. And for him, okay, let me explain something that you need to know. Even though the God who spoke to Abraham, his great grandfather, Isaac, his grandfather, and Jacob, his father, is God. But at this moment and time in his life, and throughout his lifetime, Pharaoh was Joseph's physical God that he bowed to. Not in terms of worship, but in terms of adoration in terms of honor and the bestowing and extolling of all. Because Pharaoh was like a God to him that he can see, not the big G. Because whoever occupies the throne, he alone can shine on you. I mean, I'm learning this myself. Power means a lot. So he swore in the name of Pharaoh, his king,
You guys are not living here. I swear by the life that I have in Pharaoh. That's what it meant. Let me tell you what it means when he said, by the life of Pharaoh. It means he has life in as much as has been given to him by Pharaoh. That's what we call complete 100% loyalty. He's telling them, even I myself have no life except the life Pharaoh has given to me. And by that life, by Pharaoh, I swear, you are not leaving this place until you bring your youngest brother. You must prove who you are. You must identify yourself thoroughly before me. You must be cleared up. Your being cleared is pending until you satisfy all the documents needed. This is a nation protocol. That's what he was following. And it was not just to his brothers that he did this. It was to everyone who come must be verified. They must be put through the machine of security. Can you say that of somebody? Can you say that? That's why we said in the name of Jesus, that's what we are doing. Instead of Jesus, Joseph said, in the name of Pharaoh, before whom I bow. For whom I exist. He existed for Pharaoh. First and foremost, not for his family anymore. So you, you need to know this. Many of you, God get you out of your family. God get you out of all these difficulties. And used somebody to open doors for you. And provide you everything. That's the person that you bow towards. That's the person you honor. We are talking about honor. That's the person you cherish. That's the person that you give everything to. That's the person you love. Big time. Let me speak like I'm from Texas. You cannot go through Belly Welly University and go and give your best to the crocodiles or to the sharks. You can't do that. Hallelujah. The geese are calling me out there. <laughs> Better hurry up to go and see them. Can't wait for the arrivals. In your life time, there should be one person to whom you owe your life. It's not enough to say you owe your life to God. It's already established. But where is the human being that God used to make that happen for you? Who continuously is pouring out the best towards you? That's why Sarah called Abraham Lord and Abraham called Sarah boss. Same thing happened between Isaac and Rebecca. Same thing happened between Rachel, Bill, Hazel, Palia. I think I should, should, should be like this between Rachel, Leah, Bilha, and Zelpa. Then that's how we should go. See what he said in verse 16. Send one of you and let, 
let him fetch your brother, that is Benjamin, and ye shall be kept in prison. One of you is going to, to bring your youngest brother, the rest of you are going to stay in prison. You can attest how prison life tastes like. That your words may be proved. Never believe anybody until you've given them a test that they passed. Because they, these guys could lie to you that Benjamin is alive and they've, they've slayed. Who knows whether they slew him on the road? Whether there be any truth in you. The only way I'm going to prove whether there is truth in 10 of you is if you bring your brother. I'm going to keep you all in prison and one of you is going to bring him. <laughs> whether there be truth in you. Or else, by the life of Pharaoh. <laughs> Surely, ye are spies, and ye know how we treat spies. Verse number 17. And he put them all together into what? <laughs> three days. Three days. Listen to this. Three days he put them in prison. All of them, he told them to march and told them to be taken away and put in prison. All of them, ten of them, were put in jail for three days. You must, you must, you must, you must put people away so that they can begin to think. Because all this time, they, they believe they've killed him. Who knows what they've done to Benjamin? Who knows what they've done? He saw their rascality, their carelessness, and their rivalries. So for the first time, he's going to put all of them since they are used to sitting together and planning and plotting together, he's going to put them there and let them sort themselves out. And in prison, he's going to ask the guards to deal with them severely and, and listen in to what they're saying to their pains. He put them there for three days. They thought that they would just come to Egypt and buy food and just leave. Now it's turning out to be a nightmare. A disaster of the highest form. They are all in trouble. And Joseph said unto them, on the third day, he refused to see them. He abandoned them for three days. Do this. And then you will all leave. If not, you will all die here. <laughs> I am doing what I'm doing right now because I fear God. And they understand that language. I am doing what I'm doing because I fear God. Talks about the air. Let's see what language is used. Alayim, God. I 
I am doing what I'm about to do because I fear El. See, God is called El Shaddai. Al Shaddai, Alim, Al the all that, El this, El that. I fear God. That's a common name for the Supreme God within the territory, far and near, they understood the Supreme God. I'm about what I'm about to do to all of you ten because I fear God. And they are like, what? Look at this. Verse number 19. If ye be men of truth, if ye be true men, let one of you, one of your brethren, be bound and be put in prison, and nine of you return. Carry corn in order to save your families from famine. Carry corn for the famine of your houses. Return baggage of you to your houses. One of you is going to be put in prison until you bring your youngest brother. Look at this. Verse number 20. But bring your youngest brother unto me. So shall your word be verified. Never trust until you verify. Never. That's how I'm going to verify that you guys are truthful people. And that you are not spies. And ye shall not die. And they did so. He threatened them with death. That he's going to kill them. He'll make sure they are all hanged or rot in the prison. All of them. And that the, the, he's telling them, if not, do not come back. Do not come back to Egypt. And, and one of you will stay here and die here. Look at verse 21. And they said one to another, We are verily guilty. Right before him, they changed and they, be, they right before him, they began to speak in Hebrews among themselves. Because they knew, so they thought, that the Lord of the land does not understand, he doesn't understand what they were saying. He hears what they are saying, but he doesn't understand what they are saying. Because he's an Egyptian. And they began to talk among themselves. We came to buy food. We are accused of being spies. This man has talked about us being spies many times. What is it that he sees in us that make us to be spies? Make us to be bad people? And not only that, he has put us in jail for three days. We've never been to jail before. This is, there's something wrong here. Our sins is finding us out. There's something we've done that is terrible. The past is catching up with us. And of course it will. Everyone who've done you evil, the evil they did to you is going to catch up with them also. And it will be fierce. They began to say with one another, to one another, we are verily 
they began to swear to each other that they are guilty concerning our brother. They didn't call his name. They said concerning our brother. In that, we saw the anguish of his soul. Now they are talking about, now we can gain insight into what was happening when they removed the coat of many colors, when they tore it off the back of Joseph, and when they put him in the pit, and when they removed him from the pit and they sold him to the Ishmaelite Midianites. Now they are letting us to know what happened. Look at this. Look at what they are saying. In that we saw, say, they are guilty. The guilt of what they did to Joseph is catching up with them in the land of Egypt. Now look at this. In that we saw the anguish of his soul. He was crying out, begging for his life. That's the meaning. Pleading with them. The anguish of his soul. <laughs> wow. When he besought us, when he cried out, pleaded with us, knelt before us, bowed before us, pleaded for his life, and we will not hear. They did not listen to him. Therefore is this distress come upon us. This is why this problem has come upon us after so many years of keeping it secret. See? Because why would this, they gave what, what was happening to them, they gave it. Now, let me tell you something. When certain things is happening to you when they should not happen and there is no reason why it should happen, I want you to think twice. What have you done wrong? Or are you with the wrong person? Are you in the wrong place? Were there things that happened in the past that you did wrong? Is there somebody do, you did terrible wrongs to because it's going to come back? It's coming back to deal with you. They knew it very quickly that this is why. And they didn't know that they were face to face with the person that they sold. And this is what they were saying among themselves openly. Okay, what's the meaning of this? They were now blaming each other. They were now blaming each other for what they did to Joseph. For the first time, their nose was being rubbed with salt and pepper. And they start blaming each other. They start throwing the blaming game. That's the meaning of this verse. That's verse number 21. They started blaming the, each other. I told you guys not to sell him. You guys wanted it. This one said, it wasn't me. It wasn't me. It's something of many years ago. I can't even remember how it all came. You shut up. You were the one who instigated that we sell him. Judah, you did it. Are you not supposed to be our older brother? Reuben, you did. Where were you when we were planning to do it? We were we were also not too, not to not to uh, we were stubborn, we were we were naive, we were also young men also. So where were two of you? Where were you, Simeon? And Simeon he said, Really? Really? Was it not you? The sons of Belha and Zelpa that started the fight against Joseph because he complained about you to, to daddy. Was it not two of you that came to come and inspire us to do it? Oh no, it wasn't us. It was they started fighting among themselves. 
They started quarreling and blaming each other for what they did. Was it not you who said that we should keep it secret? Wasn't you? Was it not you who said we should use your goat because daddy did not know? Were we not keeping some animals for ourselves? And Joseph was standing there listening. He was. As though he wasn't hearing them. And they were quarreling among themselves. Look at verse 22. Let me tell you, witches are going to talk. Evil people in your family, finally they will talk. Whether before they leave or before they die, they are going to talk. Mm -hmm. They will reveal themselves, verse 22. And look at what Reuben said. It's always Reuben who come to quench the quarrel. Judah always give them the reason not to shed blood, but to go ahead and sell somebody. Do something evil. Reuben will, will try to play the big boy, but when it's time to execute policy, he will not be there. And Reuben answered them all and said, Shut up. Did I not tell you all? Speak I not unto you all, saying, Do not do not sin against the child. Did I not tell you all not to sin against that child and not and, and not to sell him? Did I not tell you not to kill him? Did I not tell you not to sin against that, that boy? And ye will not, ye will not hear me. Therefore, behold, also, his blood is required. If he got killed, his blood is crying out against us. The ghost, let me let me tell you what they were saying. The ghost of we smell the ghost of Joseph in this land. This tell us one thing, that Joseph died in this land. What we are suffering now tells me, Reuben, and I'm telling all of you to shut up, that Joseph died in this land, and his ghost is haunting us, he's following us. The quicker we can satisfy this guy and leave this place, the better. If not, we will keep, we will keep having Bad luck upon bad luck. Misfortunes upon misfortune. We've never had it. Excuse me. The ghost of Joseph is following us and is against us. If we make it back in peace, back to the land of Canaan, thank God. Something is terribly wrong. His blood is following us. We cannot escape this. And I told all of you not to do it. You went ahead. You did it. Oh, she can delebala kunte. She balendele kashia pole kuntalabasinte. The blame game is being thrown now. And they knew not that Joseph understood them. Joseph was listening, was eavesdropping on them. For he spoke unto them by an interpreter. He didn't speak. All this time that Joseph talked with them, he never spoke to them directly. He spoke through an interpreter. Because Egypt had people, had officials who worked for Pharaoh, and for Joseph now, who spoke every language of the world. They were great diplomats. And he turned himself about from them and wept and returned to them. 
Because I mean, these are his brothers. He saw he saw them for who they are. For the first time, for the first time, he now knew what what part each of them played. For the first time, because when they were making this decision, he wasn't there. This is a decision they made behind his back, and they carried it out. For the first time, he knew Reuben was trying to save his life. That's what broke him down. For the first time, he knew that even among them, there was one of them that really liked him, that liked him. Among the sons of Leah, it dawned on him that they were not all bad people. Everyone in your family are not bad people. You must, you, you must find out who and who are on your side, but they can do nothing because the majority carries the vote. That Judah didn't want him to be killed, but to be sold. That Reuben didn't want him to be sold or killed, but wanted to deliver him back to his father. He was now hearing the whole thing. Openly in public. Everyone who have done you evil are going to speak in public. They are going to talk before they die or before they leave. They are going to talk. They are going to confess. And if they've taken anything that belongs to you, they must give it back to you. Hallelujah. That's why he went out and started crying when he saw the weaknesses of his own family. Why was he crying? He was crying because he saw what part each person played. Those who loved him, those who cared about him, those who wanted him away but not killed, those who wanted him not killed, not sold, but to be returned to his father. And those who argued, why should he be returned to his father so that he can now continue the policies of his mother, Rachel? Are you serious? And to continue to control the, the, their father? He heard it all. He was listening in. And he couldn't take it no more when he saw them quarreling and, 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 uh, and uh, rebuking and, and uh, in public blaming each other. And that's how his family is not his family is not supposed to look like that. That's why he, he cried. He cried because his family was a broken family. The family of a prince, Israel. The man that he worshipped, he bowed down before. Worship in terms of honor. His family is broken to this. To this level. He couldn't take it no more. He left them. He left them quarreling and blaming each other. And he went out and cried. Washed his face, came out. And let me tell you what he did. Because even if you have a broken heart, you must have a very tough mind. He returned to them again. <clears throat> And he continued with them. He continued with them. He came back, continued listening to them. And then finally he said, enough of whatever you guys are saying. And the interpreter interpreted that that's what Joseph is saying. Enough. Time for business. And he took from them Simeon and bound him before their eyes so that they know already they've spent three days in prison. And that has softened them. Now they are talking. And he couldn't stand seeing his father's family like that. And right before their eyes, he physically, he personally, 
He took Simeon and bound him. Before their eyes, he bound him and put him in jail, put him in prison. I can assure you of what is happening here. Possibility that it was Simeon who bound him. Simeon who bound him and gave him to the Ishmaelite Midianite. So now he is playing their drama. He's playing the drama of what happened in the land of Canaan. He's playing it out before them all. So that he says before their eyes, so that they are like, what? The very guy, we are talking about what happened to Joseph. And right before our eyes, one of us who bound him and gave him over. He bound that very person before their eyes. That really hit home. He didn't take anybody but Simeon. Possibly that it was Simeon who bound Joseph and handed him over. So it is Simeon who must be bound and put in jail. Because now he's hearing the entire story of who did what, who bound him, who suggested him to be sold, who suggested that he shouldn't be killed, he shouldn't be sold, who suggested that he should, be, he should not be killed but be sold, who suggested this, who took him out of the pits, and who bound him and laid him away. He bound Simeon. He himself used his hand to bound Simeon. That's really bounding is put his hand down like that and bound him with either a rope or a chain or whatever. Bound him severely. And they saw Simeon cry out in pain. An elderly man crying. And he was led away. See, when he put them in prison for three days, they were not bound, but right here is hitting home. One of their seniors is bound like a thief. This is interesting. Yeah, and he did it before their very eyes. That is what is interesting. When you hear the word of the Bible, you, you begin to look at what is the meaning of this. Because before their very eyes, they saw him. They saw him, Joseph, bound. They bound him. And they, led, and they gave him over. And now he's binding Simeon. And sending him over. Joseph bound and given over. Simeon bound and sent over. Then Joseph commanded. He commanded to do a... Uh, to fill their sacks. Now fill their sacks with corn and to restore every man's money into his sack and to give them provisions, provision for the way. And this did he unto them. See, the same good boy is, st is still the same good guy. The same good boy is the same good guy. He has not changed. Character and integrity. Love and family. When he saw how broken his father's family was, he wept. But that's not how it's supposed to be.
that is supposed to be in complete control of this family. And now look at it. They've, they've, they've run the family aground. And now his generosity shows up. People of God, you must have that two side of you. Your generosity, your integrity, and your positive aggressiveness when it is required. They are now getting corn for free. It's not free because he, Joseph, worked for it. He returned their money, put their money back in their sack. And they did. And not only that, show them the hospitality of Egypt. Because he looked around, they didn't have any food to eat on the way. Maybe they are going to stop in a hotel because we'll see the way hotels on the road as they go, call in, or where they are to sleep or something, prepare their meal or buy meal, something. They are not gonna start cooking corn on the way. He makes sure that they got not just food for their families, but he also gave each of them provision on the way. And they were surprised about this man who doesn't like us, accuse us, imprison us, bound one of us who bound him, just as we bound him, as we bound Joseph in those days, now this same man turned around to give us provisions and is generous to us. Hmm, this doesn't make any sense. Hmm. And they laid their their asses with the corn and the parted dance. <clears throat> they put all those bags upon bags of corn on the on the animals. Camels and donkeys, and they left the land of Egypt. But Simeon is in prison. And as one of them opened his sack to give his ass provender, as one of them opened one of his sack to get some corn and feed. The animal. <laughs> in the inn, they, they stopped by an inn, by maybe a hotel or a motel or something. They stopped by to feed the animals, maybe to eat and all of that, to rest. He espied. He found out, that's the meaning, he found out his money. He found out his money. For behold, it was in his sack's mouth. It was by the mouth of his sack. <coughs> Before the tide the money was right there so that immediately you open you open the bag, the money is right there in front of you. It wasn't inside the, the bag of corn, it was right at the mouth. See, Joseph knew how to play the game here. The Lord of Egypt, he knew. He's putting them, he's putting them in the biggest stress of their lives. 
They have never seen anything like this. Now they are going to be now accused of coming to Egypt to buy food and stealing their money back. Are you serious? Which means that the door in Egypt will be closed against them from buying food and they will all die of starvation. What kind of misfortune? What, what kind of thing is this? What is really happening? See, Joseph set them up so good that there is no way they can escape it. And we cannot, we cannot go back to it. How can we even explain this kind of thing? <laughs> who, <laughs> who is against us? Who among us is the traitor? No, all of you are the traitors. <laughs> wow, 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 wow. And he said unto his brethren, My money is restored. And lo, it is even in my sack. It's in my sack. And their heart failed them. Their heart failed them. And they were afraid, saying one to another, What is this? What is this? What is this that God had done unto us? <laughs> <laughs> And they began to say, what is this kind of thing that God has done against us? That's actually what they were saying. Is this a good thing? We got our money back? How come? We, we've heard of miracles that God did for our father, our grandfather and our great-grandfather. But... What do we call this? Why is God against us? What do we call this? That's really. What is God doing with us? Why is God against us? But they knew the answer. What is God doing? What kind of misfortune is this? Oh my word. And they came unto their father. Finally they reached home. Unto the land of Canaan. And told him. All that befell unto them. Saying. Hmm. The man who is the Lord of the land, he spake roughly to us and took us as for spies of the country. Look at verse 31. And we said unto him, we are true men. We are no spies. They are now reporting to their father what happened. <laughs> we are twelve brethren, sons of one man, of one father. One is not, that is one is gone, one is dead. And the youngest is this day with our father 
in the land of Canaan. They are telling their father exactly what they told the man to clear themselves. Because now Simeon is not among them. And the man, the Lord of the, of the country, said unto us, Hereby shall I know that ye are true men. Leave one of your brethren here. Just leave him here. Leave Simeon here with me. <laughs> and take food for the famine of your households and be gone. Take food, go. Leave Simeon here. Verse number 34. And bring your youngest brother unto me. Then shall I know that ye are no spies, but that ye are men of truth. So will I deliver. So will I deliver unto you your brother. And then and then only you shall traffic in the land. You shall traffic means you can do business with Egypt. You can come in and buy food and go. You can now traffic in the land. You can do like the rest are doing. They come, they buy food, they go. And their paper is stamped. They are verified. Their status says clear. But now, your status says pending. Question mark on it. And it came to pass. <laughs> As they emptied their sacks, that behold, every man's bundle of money was in his sack. Oh my God. And when both they and their father saw the bundles of money, they were afraid. Your father must have asked and said, Who set you guys up? What is going on here? Do you guys have any explanation? Why did you guys steal your money back? So you guys are determined to kill me and the rest of the family with hunger and death. And disgrace. Is this how is this how we all are going to die in the land of Canaan? The land of opportunity and blessing? How do this money come about? What's the explanation for this? And nobody had explanation and they were afraid. And how can we go back to Egypt? What are we going to say to that rough man? That's strange. Lord of Egypt. That we came and we, we stole food? Is that what you guys are now doing? Stealing food? Their father was confused, afraid, and sick of them all. And they themselves don't understand what is going on. Remember they said that God's hand was against them. That's the only way they can they can say it. And Jacob, their father, said unto them, <laughs> Me have ye <laughs> This is how it is put in my Bible. This is ancient English. Me have Me have ye bereaved, or you have bereaved me. Me have ye bereaved. 
of my children. Joseph is not, is dead. Simeon is not in prison. And ye will take Benjamin away. All these things are against me. Something is against me. <laughs> Something is against my family. And he was right. Something was against me. <laughs> and this is what Reuben said. Remember, Reuben is always the one that said something. Always the one. He is the senior. Listen to what Reuben said. Reuben always comes forward to, to prove he has been a spokesman and the power of the family. And Reuben spake unto his father, saying, Slay my two sons, if I bring him not. Yeah, you have opportunity of bringing Joseph back. You did not bring him back. And now I'm going to give you Benjamin. He said, no, 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 no. If I do not bring just uh, Benjamin back, slay my two sons. Because Reuben had two sons by then. Slay them. If I do not bring Benjamin back today, deliver him into my hand, and I will bring him to thee again. That's what he said. And he said, My son shall not go down with you. I'm afraid. For his brother is dead. And he is left alone. He is just the only one from his mother's womb. If mischief, see his father keep talking about mischief. If misfortune, if death, if something happened to him, something bad happens to him. If mischief befall him, if mischief befall him, by the way, in which ye go, then ye shall bring down my gray hair with sorrow to the grave. I will never recover. I'm still trying to recover from Joseph and now Simeon and now you are taking Benjamin with you. I will die a very sorrowful man. I'll be heartbroken. I'll have a heart attack. Please don't do this to me. He's pleading with them. Whatever the meaning of all this, stop it. And that's how we end. That's how we end. Uh, we end chapter 42. When we come back at 6 o'clock, we will be looking at chapter 43. When we come back at 6 o'clock. People of God, you see how, you see the, the various things playing out in the life and family of the prince. All because of, excuse me, some people's vindictiveness has led to all of this. Vindic vindictiveness against the son of Rachel. When you are against love, real love, and the son or daughter of a real love. This is what happens. You will not be able to kill that love. And you will not be able to kill the product of that love. The seed that comes out of that love. Like a river. It will find other parts 
your greatness. And you guys will be the one paying the price for foolishness. Hatred is not an answer to solving problems. I'll see you at 6 o'clock. This is Idikai Mary telling you, the blessing of the Lord make it rich, and he does not add any sorrow to it. Bye-bye.